What's going on everyone? My name is Russ. I'm the author behind the tattooedcatholic.com, all the blog entries, that's all by me. So uh, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try a video blog, try to accommodate some people that maybe like video uh, entries as opposed to reading the text. And to be honest, there are some topics that are just going to be easier for me to discuss than to type out on a word process. And I think this is one of those. I'm going to try and keep this video under five minutes. But something I want to talk about are those experiences that I had as a non-denominational Christian. We'll just call it a Protestant, but that's essentially what it was. And I, 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 I skim over it in the first blog entry I have called Mass, How I Ended Up Here, which gives you a, a basic overview of how I ended up on the doorstep of the Catholic Church, which is quite ironic. And I do discuss in there how I spent a lot of time actually vehemently opposed to the Catholic Church. And it was a little funny that I actually <laughs> ended up becoming a Catholic in the long run, but I think the thing I love most about being a Catholic are a result of the experiences that I had as a restless Protestant. I spent a lot of time going to different churches, bouncing around, because I was very scripture oriented. I didn't I, I knew a lot about the interpretations, the, the translations, the who, what, why, when and how of Scripture, but I didn't have the worship piece. The reason why is because I was seeking intellectual stimulation. And I would go to these uh, Protestant churches, these Lutheran churches or Christian churches, and there was just not enough intellectual discussions going on about Scripture, so I would leave. And uh, there were times, actually, where I would seek out a Bible study. I would go to the Bible study that was before the service, but I would just skip out before the service. The services, to me, were a waste of time. Uh, it would be a five, ten-minute discussion on a couple verses, and then it'd be some guitar playing, some singing, and some rah rah feel good stuff. And it just was like, why? I just didn't know why I was there. Uh, so it kept me out of church, but it, my hunger for knowledge and understanding kept me in the Bible um, in a hot and cold manner. There were times where I would dive in and I'd stay there for a couple months, learning, 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 soaking up all this knowledge, and then I'd be gone. But it's those experiences, what I would refer to as wandering through the wilderness by myself, lonely, no guidance, just trying to figure things out on my own. It's those experiences that make me appreciate a lot of what the Catholic Church has to offer. Matter of fact, some of my favorite things about the church are probably a direct result of me experiencing that restlessness as a Protestant. But on the flip side, it's a, I notice that a lot of cradle Catholics or lifelong Catholics um, take it for granted. And... It's alarming as, as a new convert, uh, about a year, if you take the six months I was in RCIA, plus probably my, I think it's about six months since I've been baptized, uh, with, a, with a very in, uh, adept background in history, that's what all these books are behind me, all history books, it's alarming the amount of modernist interpretations and philosophical uh, influence in scripture that is flooding the Catholic Church. And I think it's because of my experience as a restless Protestant is the complete opposite of that of a cradle Catholic. A cradle Catholic is given this stuff on a silver platter. Here's the catechism. Here's where you can go for all of your answers. You're given the answer sheet, man. Uh, are you really learning the material? If you go to math and the first day you show up to math class, the teacher says, hey, here's the answers for the midterm and the final exam. Here, you go. Are you really going to learn the material? Or are you just going to memorize the answers? And I think that's the difference because people have sort of, Credo Catholics have spent a lot of time sort of memorizing the answers. They don't really know why. And that makes them susceptible to these different interpretations and philosophical influencers uh, that like to put a different spin on why we believe what we believe. And a good topic for an example is how many so-called Catholics are pro-choice? It's alarming. How many Catholics on multiple polls have voted that they believe hell is symbolic? Hell is not an actual place. These are red flags, guys. These are red flags, and Catholics have a bad stereotype of not being in their Bibles. And I can tell you as a convert, as a convert and somebody who spent a ton of time in the Bible, it's true. It's true and it's not something I'd be proud of because in my personal opinion, in these early stages of me enjoying what the Catholic Church has to offer, 
and I appreciate so much a prayer regiment. What to pray? Why we pray it? Um, this rich, beautiful history of, of, of ecclesiastical Latin that we get to pray in, which is beautiful. Uh, the catechism of the Catholic Church, which is going to tell you where you can go in Scripture. And that's going to basically give you the roots of why we believe what we believe in a lot of these issues, which are at the forefront of our culture today. Uh, so, again, I think it's that experience that a lot of converts have wandering blindly in the wilderness with no guidance that makes them adore the Catholic Church. And I think I want to make this video, or I wanted to make this video to just urge cradle Catholics, you please take advantage of what you've been given. You have no idea what it is like to be by yourself, lonesome with the Bible, seeking understanding and not really being able to get it. And you've been given the answer sheet, man. And you've just thrown it in a drawer and forgotten about it. And because of that, you seek enlightenment from people who have the, who do not have your best interests in mind. They do not have your salvation in mind. Um, so with that being said, listen, I, I hope that uh, everyone listening to this understands that I'm speaking in generalities. I'm not saying all Catholics don't have a good uh, understanding of scripture, but there are a lot. Uh, so please, a mature mind to understand what I would see as an alarming trend inside the church that's not solely responsible, but plays a huge role in, in, I would say, the condition of the church or the course or the trajectory of the church over the last 30 to 40 years. Um, thanks for stopping by. Uh, stay motivated. And uh, I'll see you on the high ground.